Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. It was a big day yesterday, an incredible day. And last night, the Republican Party defied history to expand our Senate majority while significantly beating expectations in the House for the midterm and midterm year. We did this in spite of a very dramatic fundraising disadvantage driven by Democrats, wealthy donors, and special interests, and a very hostile media coverage, to put it mildly. The media coverage set a new record and a new standard. We also had a staggering number of House retirements, so it's a little tough. Uh, these are seats that could have been held pretty easily, and uh, we had newcomers going in, and a lot of them worked very hard. But it's very difficult when you have that many retirements. We held a large number of campaign rallies with uh, large, large numbers of people going to everyone. To the best of my knowledge, we didn't have a vacant or an empty seat. I'm sure you would have reported it if you spotted one, including 30 rallies in the last 60 days. And we saw the candidates that I supported achieve tremendous success last night. As an example of the 11 candidates we campaigned with during the last week, nine won last night. This vigorous campaigning stopped the blue wave that they talked about. I don't know if there ever was such a thing, but could have been. If we didn't do the campaigning, probably there could have been. And the history really will see what a good job we did in the final couple of weeks in terms of getting some tremendous people over the finish line. They really are tremendous people, but many of them were not known. But they will be known. This election marks the largest Senate gains for a President's party in a first midterm election since at least President Kennedy's in 1962. There have been only four midterm elections since 1934 in which a President's party has gained even a single Senate seat. As of now, we picked up, it looks like, three. Could be four. Perhaps it could be two. But we picked up a lot. And uh, most likely, the number will be three. You people probably know that better than I do at this point, because you've looked at the more recent numbers. Fifty-five is the largest number of Republican senators in the last 100 years. In the last 80 years, a sitting President's party has only gained a cumulative total of eight Senate seats, averaging one per decade. So if we picked up two, three, or four, that's a big percentage of that number. So in the last 80 years, you think of that, only eight seats. In President Obama's first midterm election, he lost six Senate seats, including in the deep blue state of Massachusetts. Republicans captured at least four Senate seats held by Democrat incumbents. And these are tremendously talented, hardworking people that did this. Indiana, North Dakota, Florida, Missouri, we also won two open Senate seats in Tennessee. I want to congratulate our great champion who did such a great job in Tennessee, Marsha. And in Utah. And Arizona is looking very good, really very good. She's done a terrific job. That was a tough race, and she's done a fantastic job. In each of these open seats, Democrats recruited very strong candidates with substantial fundraising and media support. We were getting bombarded with money on the other side. In the House, Republicans dramatically outperformed historical precedents and overcame a historic number of retirements, the most House Republican retirements in 88 years. Forty-three House Republicans retired. 
Now, I, I will say this, that in many cases, they were chairman of committees, and they left because they weren't chairman, because the Republicans have a rule for six years. And what that does is wonderful in one way. It lets people come through the system and become chairman. In another way, it drives people out. Because when they're a chairman, they don't want to go and not be a chairman. You're the chairman of a committee, and you're a big deal. And all of a sudden, you're not doing that anymore. So they leave. We had a lot of them leave. It's, uh, I guess you can flip a coin as to which system is better. The Democrats do the other. Some of their folks have been on those committees for a long time as chairman. In 2010, President Obama's first midterm, he lost 63 seats. By contrast, as of the most current count, looks like around 27 House seats or something. And we'll figure that out pretty soon. We also had a slew of historic wins in the governor's races. The governor's races were incredible against very well-funded, talented, and skilled Democrat candidates and people that worked very, very hard, respectfully, for those candidates, like Oprah Winfrey, who I like. I don't know if she likes me anymore, but that's okay. She used to. But she worked very hard in Georgia, very, very hard. And if you look at them, we have four governor's races crucial to 2020 and the presidential race, Florida, Iowa, Ohio, and Georgia, the big ones. Florida, Iowa, Ohio, and Georgia. Can't get much more important than that. They were incredible. They were actually incredible campaigns, too. Incredible. As of right now, Republicans will control the majority of governorships across the country, including three great women who worked very hard, governors of Alabama, South Dakota, and Iowa. They worked very, very hard. They're very talented. By expanding our Senate majority, the voters have also clearly rebuked the Senate Democrats for their handling of the Kavanaugh hearings. That was a factor, I think maybe a very big factor, the way that was handled, I think, was uh, tremendous energy was given to the Republican Party by the way they treated then-Judge Kavanaugh, now Justice Kavanaugh and expressed their support for confirming more great pro-Constitution judges. Candidates who embraced our message of low taxes, low regulations, low crime, strong borders, and great judges excelled last night. They excelled. They, uh, they really, I mean, we have a, a list of, of people that were fantastic. Uh, and I'm just going to point them out. Uh, Mike Bost, Rodney Davis, Andy Barr was fantastic. I went to Kentucky. I, for the most part, I didn't campaign for the House, but I did actually make a special trip for Andy Barr because he was in a very tough race in Kentucky, and he won. That was a very tough race. The polls were all showing that he was down and down substantially, and he won. And that one I did do, Pete Stauber of Minnesota, great guy, he's new, and ran a fantastic race. On the other hand, you had some that decided to, let's stay away, let's stay away. And they did very poorly. I'm not sure that I should be happy or sad, but I feel just fine about it. Carlos Cubella, Mike Kaufman, too bad, Mike, Mia Love, I saw Mia Love. She'd call me all the time to help her with a hostage situation. Being held hostage in Venezuela. Uh, but Mia Love gave me no love. And she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. And Barbara Comstock was another one. I mean, I think she could have won that race, but she didn't want to have any Embrace. For that, I don't blame her. But she, um, she lost, substantially lost. Uh, Peter Roskam didn't want the embrace. Eric Paulson didn't want the embrace. And in New Jersey, I think he could have done well, but it didn't work out too good. 
Bob Eugen, I feel badly because I think that's something that could have been one. That's a race that could have been one. John Faso, those are some of the people that, you know, decided for their own reason not to embrace uh, whether it's me or what we stand for, but what we stand for uh, meant a lot to most people. And we've had tremendous support and tremendous support in the Republican Party, among the biggest support in the history of the party. I've actually heard at 93 percent, it's a record, but I won't say that because who knows. But we've had tremendous support. Uh, America is booming like never before. We're doing fantastic. We have Larry Kudlow here, and he said the numbers are as good as he's ever seen numbers at any time for our country. But he's a young man, so he hasn't seen that many numbers. Where's Larry? You're a young man, right, Larry? And you haven't been doing this too long, but they're as good as you've ever seen. And uh, we may have. If you have a question for Larry, we'll do that. But I want to send my warmest appreciation and regards to Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. We really worked very well together. We have been working very well together. We actually have a great relationship. People just don't understand that, which is fine. And also to uh, perhaps, looks like, I would think, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And I give her a lot of credit. She works very hard, and she's worked long and hard. I give her a great deal of credit for what she's done and what she's accomplished. Hopefully, we can all work together next year to continue delivering for the American people, including on economic growth, infrastructure, trade, lowering the cost of prescription drugs. These are some of the things that the Democrats do want to work on, and I really believe we'll be able to do that. I think we're going to have a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of reason to do it. And, and I will say, just as a matter of business, I was with some very successful people last night. We were watching the returns. So if the Republicans won, and let's say we held on by two, or one, or three, it would have been very hard out of that many Republicans to ever even get support among Republicans, because there'll always be one or two or three people that, for good reason or for bad reason or for grandstanding, we have that, too. You've seen that. You've seen that. Plenty of grandstanding. But for certain reasons, that many people, you're always going to have a couple that won't do it. So that puts us in a very bad position. In other words, had we kept — and this is no — I'm saying this for a very basic reason. It's common sense. It puts us in a very tough position. We win by one or two or three, and you'll have one or two or three or four or five, even, come over and say, you know, look, we're not going to go along with this. We want this, this, this. And all of a sudden, we, we can't even — we wouldn't even be able to get it, in many cases, out of the Republicans' hands before we sent it on to the Senate. And now, we have a much easier path, because the Democrats will come to us with a plan for infrastructure, a plan for health care, a plan for whatever they are looking at, and we'll negotiate. And as you know, it's been very hard in the Senate, because we need essentially 10 votes from Democrats, and we don't get those votes, because the Democrats do really stick together well. I don't agree with them on a lot of policy, but I agree with them on sticking together. They stick together great. So now we go into the Senate. We don't have the 10 votes. And what happens? It doesn't get passed. Even if it gets out of the House, it doesn't get passed. So under the new concept of what we're doing, I say, come on, let me see what you have. They want to do things. You know, I keep hearing about uh, investigations, fatigue. Like from the time, almost from the time I announced I was going to run, they've been giving us this uh, investigation fatigue. It's been a long time. They got nothing, zero. You know why? Because there is nothing. But they can play that game, but we can play it better. Because we have a thing called the United States Senate. And a lot of very questionable things were done between leaks of classified information and many other elements that should not have taken place. And all you're going to do is end up in back and forth and back and forth, and two years is going to go up, and we won't have done a thing. I really think, and I really respected what 
Nancy said last night about bipartisanship and getting together and uniting. She used the word uniting, and she used the, the bipartisanship statement, which is so important, because that's what we should be doing. So we can uh, look at us, they can look at us, and then we can look at them, and it'll go back and forth, and it'll probably be very good for me politically. I could see it being extremely good politically, because I think I'm better at that game than they are, actually. But uh, we'll find out. I mean, you know, we'll find out. Or we can work together. You can't do them simultaneously, by the way. Just think of somebody says, oh, you can do them both. No, you can't. Because if they're doing that, we're not doing the other, just so you understand. So we won't be doing that. But now what happens is we send it to the Senate, and we'll get 100 percent Democrat support, and we'll get some Republican support. And if it's good, I really believe we have Republicans that will help with the approval process, and they will really help with the approval process. So it really could be a beautiful bipartisan type of situation. If we won by one or two or three or four or five, that wouldn't happen. And the closer it is, the worse it is. This way, they'll come to me, we'll negotiate. Maybe we'll make a deal, maybe we won't. That's possible. But we have a lot of things in common on infrastructure. We want to do something on health care. They want to do something on health care. There are a lot of great things that we can do together. And now we'll send it up, and we will really get — we'll get the Democrats, and we'll get the Republicans or some of the Republicans. And I'll make sure that we send something up that the Republicans can support. And they're going to want to make sure they send something up that the Democrats can support. So our great country is booming like never before, and we're thriving on every single level both in terms of economic and military strength, in terms of development, in terms of GDP, we're doing unbelievably. I will tell you our trade deals are coming along fantastically. The USMCA and uh, South Korea is finished. Uh, USMCA has gotten rave reviews. We're not going to lose companies anymore to other countries. They're not going to do that because they have a tremendous economic incentive, It's meaning it's prohibitive for them to do that. So it's not going to be like NAFTA, which is one of the worst deals I've ever seen, although we've made some other pretty bad ones, too. Now is the time for members of both parties to join together, put partisanship aside, and keep the American economic miracle going strong. It is a miracle. We're doing so well. And I've said it at a lot of rallies. Some of you have probably heard it so much you don't want to hear it again. But when People come to my office, presidents, prime ministers. They all congratulate me almost the first thing on what we've done economically, because it is really amazing. And our steel industry is back. Our aluminum industry is starting to do really well. These are industries that were dead. Our miners are working again. We must all work together to protect our military. We have to do that. To support our law enforcement, secure our borders, and advance really great policy, including environmental policy. We want crystal clean water. We want beautiful, perfect air. Air and water has to be perfect. At the same time, we don't want to put ourselves at a disadvantage to other countries who are very competitive with us and who don't abide by the rules at all. We don't want to hurt our jobs. We don't want to hurt our factories. We don't want companies leaving. We want to be totally competitive, and we are. And right now, we have just about the cleanest air, the cleanest water we've ever had, and it's always going to be that way. We insist on it. So environmental is very important to me. And with that, I'll take a few questions, if you'd like. Whoa! I didn't know what happened. All right, go ahead, John. That was a lot of hand shooting up so quickly. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, Mr. President, you talked at length just now about bipartisanship. Uh, the presumed Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, talked about it last night. I'm sure that's encouraging for the American people. But do you really believe, given what the relationship has been like between this White House and the Democratic Party, that that will happen? Will, I, I think will, there's a good chance. Yeah. I think there's a very good chance. If I could just finish, it your, will happen. Will you have to compromise on certain issues to the point where it could hurt you in 2020? And do you expect 
that when the Democrats take over the chairmanship of all these important committees, you're going to get hit with a blizzard of subpoenas on everything from the well, Russian investigation okay. to your cell phone use to your tax returns. Ready? Then you're going to, if that happens, then we're going to do the same thing, and government comes to a halt. And I would blame them, because they now are going to be uh, coming up with policy. They're the majority in the House. I expect uh, that they will come up with some fantastic ideas that I can support on the environment, on so many different things, uh, including prescription drug prices, which we've made a big dent in already, including some of the things that we're working on for the vets. We've gotten choice approved. We've got a lot of things approved, but they have some other elements that we want. There are many things we can get along on without a lot of trouble that we agree very much with them and they agree with us. I would like to see bipartisanship. I'd like to see unity. And I think we have a very good chance of, and maybe not on everything, but I think we have a very good chance of, of seeing that. Go ahead. Uh, one question on the lame duck, sir, and one on your cabinet. You toyed with the idea during the campaign of a shutdown before the midterms in order to secure border wall funding. Are you prepared to go on a shutdown strategy during the lame duck since this might be your last best chance? Not necessarily. To secure that? Sense. Look, I speak to Democrats all the time. They agree that a wall is necessary. A wall is necessary. And as you know, we're building the wall. We've started. But we should build it at one time, not in chunks. But you want much more money, and you want no, much sooner. No, we need the money to build the wall, the whole wall, not pieces of it all over. And we are doing it. Now we have the military. Now we have other elements of a wall that are pretty nasty, to be honest with you. But it's nevertheless, it's pretty hard to get through it. But no, I'd like to see the wall. Many of the people that we'll be dealing with, you know, in 2006, they approved the wall, essentially. It was a very strong border fence, but it was the same thing. And they all approved it. They all agreed. I have statements from every one of them. We have them saying, we need the wall. I mean, they sound like me. Mm -hmm. But we do need it because we have people coming. And I'm not just talking about the caravans. We have people coming through our border that you physically can't put that many people. It's a 2,000-mile stretch. You can't put that many people along that stretch to guard it. And even if you did, Tremendous fighting would ensue. So uh, we need the wall. Many Democrats know we need the wall. And we're just going to have to see what happens. I it, mean, I will be fighting for it. Uh, they have done everything in their power to make sure. We, I got the military, $700 billion and $716 billion. The wall is a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost of that. But their whole agenda has been to try not giving me anything for the wall. I really believe politically they're hurting themselves. I actually think politically that's a good thing for me, but I want to get the wall up because we need it. So no shutdown scenario. I don't know. The, I can't tell the, you that. No, I, I can't duck. commit to that, but it's possible. And can you give us clarity, sir, on your thinking currently, now after the midterms, about your attorney general and your deputy attorney general? Do they have long-term job I'd security? I'd rather answer that uh, at a little bit different time. Uh, we're looking at a lot of different things, including cabinet. I'm very happy with most of my cabinet. Uh, we're looking at uh, different people for different positions. You know, it's very common after the midterms. I didn't want to do anything before the midterms. But I will tell you that, for the most part, I'm extremely happy with my cabinet. I think Mike Pompeo has fit in so beautifully. He's done an incredible job. How about your interior uh, secretary? Uh, we're looking at that, and I, want, I do want to study whatever is being said. Uh, is he in I think he's doing. I think he's doing an excellent job. But we will take a look at that in a very strong, and we'll probably have an idea about that in about a week. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. <laughs> wow, this is. Go ahead, John. He gave me a fair interview the other day, so I might as well ask him a question. All right, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and picking up there, you told me the other day that you are an open book. So I think I am an open book. So point blank, Democrats go after your tax returns. Will you try to block that, or will you? Allow them to have Well, them. look, uh, as I've told you, they're under audit. They have been for a long time. They're extremely complex. People wouldn't understand them. They're done by among the biggest and best law firms in the country. Same thing with the accounting firms. The accountants are a very, very large, powerful firm from the standpoint of uh, respect. They're highly respected. Big firm. A, a great law firm. Or you, would, you know it very well. They do these things. They put them in. But people don't understand tax returns. Now, I did do a filing of over 100 pages, I believe, mm -hmm. which is in 
the offices. And when people went and saw that filing and they saw the magnitude of it, they were very disappointed. And they saw the, you know, the detail. You get far more from that. And I guess we filed that now three times. But you get far more from that than you could ever get from a tax return. But when you're under audit, and I'm on a very continuous audit because there are so many companies, and it is a very big company, far bigger than you would even understand. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a great company, but it's big, and it's complex, and it's uh, probably feet high. It's a very complex uh, instrument, and I think that uh, people wouldn't understand it. But if I were finished with the audit, I would have an open mind to it, I would say that. But I don't want to do it during the audit. And, and really, no lawyer, even from the other side, they say often, not always, but when you're under audit, you don't have, you don't subject it to that. You get it done, and then you release it. So when that happens, if that happens, I would certainly have an open mind to so, it. So that means if the audit is still on, you will not turn over the tax returns, or you'll when, fight to when block it. When it's under it. audit, no, nobody would. Nobody turns over a return when it's under audit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, please. One, I was tempted to ask you why you like Oprah so much, but I, I think I'll go on to the question that. Uh, why do I like Oprah? <laughs> what kind of a question is it? Yeah, I'm just asking, just curious. But he's the a, real he's question. A comedian here. The real question. I is, do like Oprah, by the way. I do. She was a, a person I knew well. Came to my place in Palm Beach often, and I have a lot of respect for her. Unfortunately, she didn't do the trick. The, the real question is, uh, you just sat up here and said that, um, from this podium, that it's, is, you're, are you offering a my way or highway scenario to the Democrats? You're saying no. that if, 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 if they start investigating you, that oh. you can play that game oh, and yeah. investigate Better them. Better than them. Can you, com can you compartmentalize that? And I think I know more than they know. Can you compartmentalize that and still continue to work with them for the benefit of the rest of the country? No. Or are you Are all bets off? No. If they do that, then it's just all it is is uh, a warlike posture. And yeah, so then, the, wait a minute, then the follow-up, I'm you sorry, heard, John. You heard my answer. Go well, ahead. Well, since it's Jim, I'll let it go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to challenge you on, on one of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign. Uh, in, in the midterms. That here, this, here we go. That, well, if Let's you don't go. mind, Let's Mr. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, yeah, I, Mr. President, I consider it to be an as invasion. As you know, Mr. President, the caravan was not an invasion. It's, a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. Thank you for telling and me And why, why, why did you characterize it as such? Uh, because I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But do you think that you demonized immigrants in not this election no, not to try I to want keep them, I want them to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. You know, they have to come in, Jim, through a process. I want it to be a process. And I want people to come in, and we need right. the people. Your you know, campaign, wait, your campaign. Wait, wait, you know why we need the people, don't you? Because we have hundreds of companies moving in. We need the people. Right. But your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so that's on. Well, it, it, but They it, weren't it, actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? They weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Right. These, were, these were people, this was an actual, you know, it happened a few days ago. And uh, They're hundreds of miles away, though. They're hundreds and hundreds of miles you know away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, would be ask, much better. If I, if I may okay, ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may uh, ask Peter, one other ahead. question, are you worried? Of, that's enough. That's enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if I may ask, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't yeah. treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter. Go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts well, his Well, I'm not a big fan of, of yours either, so, I understand. Know, to be honest so with you. So let me ask you a question if I can. You repeatedly you said... Are, you are the best. Mr. President, you repeatedly, over the course okay, of... Okay, just sit down, please. Well, when you, when you report fake news, no. 
When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. Go ahead. Mr. President, over the course, over the course of the last several days of the campaign, sir, Sir, at the end of the campaign, you repeatedly said that Americans need to fear Democrats. You said Democrats would unleash a wave of violent crime that endangers families everywhere. Why are you because pitting very Americans? Weak on crime. Why Excuse are you me. pitting Americans Peter. against one another, sir? Peter, what are you trying to be him? No, Peter, I'm just asking let me just, the question. Let me just tell you. Very simple. Because they're very weak on crime. Because they have often suggested members and people within the Democrat Party at a high level have suggested getting rid of ICE, getting rid of law enforcement. That's not going to happen, okay? We want to be strong on the borders. We want to be strong on law enforcement. And I want to, I want to cherish ICE, because ICE does a fantastic job. So, the, the, what they do for us is so, really, it's so unrecognized how good a job they do. So we want to take care of them, and we want to hold them very close, because they do a good job. But the question, okay, to, yeah, be clear, the, to be clear, though, the question is, why sit, are you— Sit down, But Peter. the question— but you didn't answer my question. Just very simply, the question is, why are you pitting Americans against one another, sir? I'm not. Is that how you view no, I'm not. citizens well, of look, this country? I'll tell you what. We won a lot of elections last night. We did very well last night. And but in many ways, I think it it's going the to country. Have, I think it's going to have a very positive impact. Uh, I watched NBC this morning. They didn't report it exactly correctly, but that's, you know, very, very, that's the fact with NBC. Nothing I can do about that. But I want this country to have protection. We want security in our country. I want security, Peter. I mean, you maybe don't think it's so important. And I think when you don't have it, you are indeed unleashing crime. I feel that. Go you ahead. said you would sign an executive order Go on ahead. birthright citizenship. Are you still going to sign the executive order on birth, birthright you'll answer, citizenship? You'll this ask week? me that question a little bit later. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. The investigation by the special counsel Robert Mueller has been going on since last spring. It's been uh, over it's your been a head. long time. Yeah, it's been over your head, over Republicans' head during the midterms as well. Is this an opportunity for you, Mr. President? to end that investigation? Would you consider uh, removing Mr. Mueller from his position? I could have ended it any time I wanted. I didn't. And there was no collusion. There was no anything. I didn't. Uh, they went after hackers in Moscow. I don't know about that. They went after people uh, with uh, tax problems from years ago. They went after people with uh, loans and other things. Had nothing to do with my campaign. Uh, this is a investigation where many, many millions of dollars has been spent, and there's no collusion. It was supposed to be on collusion. There's no collusion. And I think it's, I think it's very bad for our country, I will tell you. I think it's a shame. And a poll came out today, by the way, from NBC, or at least I saw it on NBC, where a majority of the people do not agree with the Mueller investigation, or it wasn't approved. They have approval and disapproval, and it had a, a much higher disapproval. Uh, it should end, because it's very bad for our country. So if it's, it's, it's bad... I, and I'm not just talking about the tremendous expense. And the other thing is, they should look at the other side also. They only look at one side. They're not looking at all of the things that came up during this investigation. They don't do that. They should also get people that can be fair, not 13 or 14 or 17. I call them the angry Democrats. They are angry people. And it's a very unfair thing for this country. It's a very, very — forget about unfair to me. It's very bad for our country. Okay. So, Mr. President, if yeah. it's un — Go ahead. Mr. No, President, no, no, no. just wait please. just a moment. If it's unfair to the country and it's costing millions of dollars, why don't you just — Give him the mic, it? please. I've answered the question. Okay. Go ahead. Take the — take the — Well, I'll give you voter I, — I will give you voter suppression. You just have to — sit down, please. Sit down. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I didn't call you. I'll give you voter suppression. Take a look at the CNN polls, how inaccurate they were. That's called voter suppression. Go Thank ahead, please. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not responding. I'm responding to — excuse me. I'm not responding to you. I'm talking to this gentleman. Would you please sit down? Would, excuse me. Excuse me. Would you please sit down? Please, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Now that the uh, now that the House of Representatives very hostile, has uh, it's such a hostile media. It's so sad. You ask me about no. You rudely interrupted him. You rudely interrupted him. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Do your demands remain to sa the same to the United States Congress on uh, immigration in exchange for a DACA fix, in exchange for an amnesty for 1.7 million? Are you willing to change any of those demands that you gave to Congress earlier? I think we could really do something having to do with DACA. And what really happened with DACA, we could have done some pretty good work on DACA, but a judge ruled that DACA was okay. Had the judge not ruled that way, I think we would have made a deal. Once the judge ruled that way, the Democrats didn't want to talk anymore. So it'll see, we'll see how it works out at the Supreme Court. Do you still? <laughs> Go ahead. From where? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Which, which group? Where do you want me to take a question from? Yeah, go ahead, ma'am, go ahead. Take the, oh, either one, either one. Both? <laughs> or both? Okay. Are you together? Go ahead. <laughs> We're not together. Mr. President, how do you respond to critics who say that your message on the campaign towards minorities have been polarizing? I don't think it has is, been at all. But is the election of two mus Muslim women, one of them is veiled to the House, which is making history. Is this a rebuke of this message? I don't do you think? what you're saying. What? But is it a rebuke of this message? Do you think that this is more reflective of multi-ethnic and multicultural America? Uh, well, uh, that question, I can only say this. You look at the employment and unemployment numbers for African Americans, for Asian Americans, for Hispanic Americans, they're at a historic high. Uh, a poll came out recently where my numbers with Hispanics and with African Americans are the highest, the best they've ever been. That, had, that took place two or three days ago, the poll. Uh, the, I have the best numbers with African American and Hispanic American that I've ever had before. And you saw the same poll. So I can't say that. I can say this. You look at median income. You look at all of the employment and unemployment numbers. Uh, they're doing the best they've ever done. And okay. it, it reflects, it really is re very reflective in the polls. Yes, go ahead. Mr. President, I'm from Brooklyn, so you'll understand Good, me. I understand you very well. Uh, uh, my question is on health care. How is it possible to keep premiums down and cover pre-existing conditions without the individual mandate to fund it? Well, first of all, what we're doing, and we're, if you look at the Department of Labor, also uh, Secretary, separately, separ Secretary Azar, what they've done, they've come up with some incredible health care plans, which is causing great competition and driving the prices right down. But we are getting rid of the individual mandate because it was very unfair to a lot of people. But at the same time, we're covering the people that need it. But the individual mandate was a disaster because people that couldn't necessarily afford it were having to pay for the privilege of not having to pay for health care. And it was bad health care at that. So we are working many plans for health care. We're creating tremendous competition. We had Obamacare repealed and replaced. Unfortunately, one person changed his mind at the last moment. And we had no Democrat support. I have to say that. We didn't have one vote. We would have repealed it, replaced it. We would have had a large-scale, very good health care plan. Now we're doing it a different way. We're doing it a different way. Uh, but getting rid of the individual mandate is a very, very popular thing and a very important thing, and people very much appreciate it. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, that's, that's enough. Go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, two questions. One, I know you went through the results, and you obviously studied them late last night. What lesson did you learn most from looking at those results? Was there one thing that, as you kind of reviewed them, that you'll change your strategy, not just for Congress, but Kind of going forward, and then just to follow up. Well, I think the results that I've learned and may be confirmed. I think people like me. I think people like the job I'm doing, frankly, because if you look at every place I went to do a rally, I couldn't do it with everybody, uh, but and it was very hard to do it with uh, people in Congress uh, because there's just too many. There would be too many stops. But uh, I did it with the Senate. I did it with Andy Barr, as you know, and and he won. He won a very tough race against McGrath. I was a very, very tough race in Kentucky, and he was down quite a bit, and I went there, and we had a tremendous, very successful, some of you were at that rally, and he won that race. But I could only do that so much because there were just so many players involved. But I did focus on the Senate, and we had tremendous success with the Senate, really tremendous. Can I ask you one more, one more question? Sorry, Mr. Mr. President, one more question, if you don't mind. I'm so sorry, sir.
It's a rare opportunity. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people are going to be rushing to Iowa, rushing to New Hampshire. You know that the Democrats are already looking ahead to 2020. Do you want to lock down your ticket right now, sir? Will the vice president be your running mate in 2020? Well, I haven't asked him, but I hope so. Where are you? Mike, will you be my running mate? Huh? Stand up, Mike, please. Raise your right hand. No, I'm only kidding. Will you? Thank you. Okay, good. The, uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was unexpected, but I feel very fine. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Going back to the Russia investigation and the potential investigations from the now democratically uh, democratic majority in Congress, some say that you could stop all this by declassifying. I could. I could, st I could fire everybody right now, but you, I don't want to stop it because what about politically, the I don't like stopping it. Yeah. Uh, it's a disgrace. It should have never been started because there was no crime. Uh, it is. Everybody has conflicts. They all have conflicts over there that are. Uh, beyond anything that anybody's ever seen in terms of conflicts, uh, from uh, the fact that people ask for jobs, from the fact that they have very good friends on the other side, like really good friends like Comey, who, by the way, lied and leaked, and also leaked classified information. Nothing happened there. It might, perhaps. Maybe something's happening that I don't know about. I stay away from it. But you know what I do? I let it just go on. They're wasting a lot of money, but I let it go on because I don't want to do that. But you're right. I could end it right now. I could say that investigation is over. But it's, it's really um, — it's a disgrace, frankly. And it's an embarrassment to our country. It's an embarrassment to the people of our country. And it's too bad. Go ahead. What about the de de declassification of the documents? Some say that that would clear well, it all up. We're looking at that. No, You're no, we're looking at it? that very seriously. Declassification, okay. we're looking yeah. at very seriously. Okay, can I ask one more question? It's amazing how people on the other side just don't want those documents declassified. But no, we're looking at that very carefully. And I certainly wanted to wait till after the midterms. Can I ask you one more question, Mr. President? Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. You have campaigned as a pro life president, you have defended the rights of unborn children. You now have a divided Congress. It's unlikely to pass any right. pro-life pro bills. Very tough issue. H how are you going to push forward your pro-life agenda? Just going to push. I've been pushing. I've done a very good job, too. We're very happy with me. But it's a tough issue for the two sides. There's no question about it. But what are you going to do? There is great division. What am I going to do? I, I won't be able to explain that to you, because it is an issue that is a very uh, divisive, polarizing issue. But there is a solution. I think I have that solution, and nobody else does. What? We're going to be we're going to be working on that. Yes, go ahead, please. She took your place, but that's okay. Mr. President, just a quick question uh, on rural America. In states like Indiana, North Dakota, folks turned out for Republican candidates. Could you talk a little bit about what this means for your agenda in terms of trade and the farm bill? The Farm Bill is working really well. I mean, we could have had it approved any time, but we're looking to get work rules approved. The farmers want it. I'd like it. The problem is the Democrats are not giving us the 10 votes that we need. We are. Everybody wants it. The farmers want it. But the Democrats are not approving the Farm Bill with work rules. We could have it very fast without the work rules, but we want the work rules in, and the Democrats just don't want to vote for that. So at some point, they'll have to pay maybe a price. Jeff, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank have you, you seen much. any evidence that Russia or China intervened in yesterday's election? Well, we've gonna, we're going to make a full report. And unlike the previous administration, we've done a lot of work on that issue. And uh, if you look, uh, speak with the FBI, speak with the Department of Justice, speak to Homeland Security. Uh, we've spent a lot of time. It gets very little coverage in the papers. I mean, you cover the nonsense part, but you don't cover the important. This is very important. And we have been working very hard on China and Russia and everybody else looking into our elections or meddling with our elections. But uh, people tend not to write about it. But we have worked very hard, as you've probably heard. What do you, what do you intend to say, sir, to President Xi and to President Putin when you meet with them later this month? Well, I have a good relationship with both. Uh, I know uh, President Xi better. But I think I have a very good relationship with both. I actually had a very good meeting in Russia that you people didn't agree with, but that's okay. It doesn't much matter, obviously, because you here I am. But the fact is that uh, I had a very, very good meeting 
a very, very good meeting with President Putin. Uh, and a lot was discussed about security, about Syria, about uh, Ukraine, uh, about the fact that President Obama allowed a very large part of Ukraine to be taken. And right now, you have submarines off that particular parcel that we're talking about. You that know was, talking that was about. President Putin who, who annexed Crimea. So that was President Obama's regime. That was during President Obama, right? That was, that was not during me. But that it was, was during, President No, that Putin, was President sir, who did the Obama. annexation. No, no. It was President Obama that allowed it to happen. Had nothing to do with me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News. Um, you're a man who likes to win, but last night was not an absolute victory for you. I'll be, hon I'll be honest. I thought it was a... I thought it was a very close to complete victory. When you look at it from the standpoint of negotiation, when you look at it from the standpoint of deal-making, because it's all about deal-making, again, if we had the majority and we had one or two or three votes to play with, we would never — we would have been at a standstill. I really believe that we have a chance to get along very well with the Democrats. And if that's the case, we can do a tremendous amount of legislation and get it approved by both parties. So I consider it to be, hey, look, I won Georgia. Uh, President Obama campaigned very hard in Georgia. Oprah Winfrey campaigned very, very hard all over the television. I said, this is going to be tough. I only had me. I didn't have anybody else. And I went to Georgia, and we had one of the largest crowds that anybody here has seen ever at a political rally. And you know what? He won. And he won actually by, you know, pretty good margin. He won. And then we went to Florida. And they had celebrities all over the place. And a man who happens to be a very smart person uh, was running, Ron DeSantis. And people didn't give him a chance. And I went and we had — we did some great work. And they're going to have a great governor of the state of Florida. And then we talked about the Senate. And a lot of money was pouring in for the Democrat. This is a man who's been in office for, like, 44 years or something. This is a man who's, like, a professional at getting elected and being at office. So he's not — Bill Nelson, not easy to beat, okay? And — but they had a lot of celebrity coming out for Nelson. They had everybody coming out for Nelson. And Rick Scott won, and I helped him. And I think we've done an amazing job. And you could look at many other places. You just take a look at some of the other places. Uh, and we just got the word that in Iowa, you have a governor who just got extended, who's fantastic, Kim, just got extended, and, and numerous other places. I think it was a great victory. I I'll be honest. I think it was a great victory. And actually, some of the news this morning was that it was, in fact, a great victory. But if you look at it from the standpoint of gridlock, I really believe there's going to be much less gridlock because of the way this is going than any other way. No, wait, sit down, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me ask you about one of the campaign promises you made down the stretch, which was a 10 percent tax cut for the middle class. Yeah. You just talked about gridlock. Democrats, they now run the House, yeah. and, Ways, House yeah. Ways and Means Committee. If it means a tax cut of some kind for the middle class, but that means raising rates elsewhere, corporations, on the wealthiest, is that a trade-off that you would be willing to make well, and able to be. enact the middle-class You know that this will have to be now uh, proposed, because if we did it now, we don't have the votes in the Senate. You don't have — we need — we would need 10 Democrat votes. We probably couldn't get them. If we could, we could pass it very easily in the House. But there's no reason to waste time, because you don't have the votes in the Senate. But if the uh, — as an example, if the Democrats come up with an idea for tax cuts, which I'm a big believer in tax cuts, I would absolutely pursue something, even if it means some adjustment. Some adjustment on which side? The corporate, some the individual? Yeah, to make it possible. But I would love to see a tax cut for the middle class. Uh, now, that's going to be their decision. They're going to have to make that decision. As you know, if we bring it up to the Senate, we'd need Democrat votes, 10, and we don't have those 10 votes. And just because the markets would — and just because the markets would want to know, sir, some adjustment, would that be — one, two, three percent oh, on I, either I'm side. Not you that. I'm just saying I would be certainly willing to do a little bit of an adjustment. Go ahead, behind. Thank you. you go thank ahead, you. please. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. Um, two questions. One is um, you had talked about leaders who had called to congratulate you. Did President Putin call to congratulate you? And will you, in fact, meet with him at lunch 
uh, this coming weekend. Well, as I understand it, we're having, and I guess a lot of you are going over, we're having a lunch for numerous countries. I'll be there. I believe President Putin is going to be there. We don't have anything scheduled. Uh, I, I don't think we have anything scheduled in Paris. Uh, and I'm coming back very quickly. I'm going over. This is a great event. This is an important um, — really, this is going to be a very important and, I think, a very beautiful ceremony. I'm looking forward and to going. And we're representing the incredible heroes of the world, but the heroes of our country from World War I. And so I'll be going there, and I am very proud to go there. Did, did he call I don't, you? I don't think we have time set aside for that meeting. Now, with that being said, we're very shortly meeting again at the G20, where he'll be there, and I'll be there, and that's where we're actually looking forward to meet. And, we and will be having we will be having a lunch, but I think there are many people there. And did he call the, you to congratulate you? And if I could also just invite you, since this is a quite a gathering we've got here, to go ahead and talk about the staff changes that you expect in the White House while we're here. We're eager to hear about them. Is General, well, I, I is General Kelly going to stay as on? We make, as we make changes, we'll. Sit down and talk to you about it. I mean, there's no great secret. A lot of, a lot of uh, administrations make changes after midterms. Uh, I will say that for the most part, I'm very, very happy with this cabinet. We're doing a great but, job. But what all about you, in the White House? What do? about in the White House, sir? You, you've got a lot of White House staff. Some have been talking about leaving. General Kelly has been uh, well, rumored okay. to be leaving. No, people is he leave? People leave. And is that going to happen? People sir? leave. I don't. I I haven't heard about John Kelly. But no, people. People leave. They come in. They're here. It's a very exhausting job, although I love doing it, I must tell you. But it's exhausting for a lot of people. I'm surprised at a lot of people. <clears throat> they start off, they're young people. They're there for two years, and they're old by the time they leave. <laughs> it's quite exhausting. But, but I love doing it. And I, I'll tell you, uh, there will be changes. Nothing monumental okay. from that standpoint. I don't think very much different than most administrations. But — and we have — I mean, we have many people lined up for every single position, any position. Everybody wants to work in this White House. We are a hot country. This is a hot White House. We are a White House that people want to work with. Okay. okay. No, no, please, behind you. Behind you, go ahead. This has been a very challenging campaign. It, it is, this has been a very, been a very challenging campaign. It's been a very challenging campaign. It has That's involved true. quite a lot of abuse. And a lot of violence. People have died during the course of this campaign. Right. Is there any way in which you think the temperature could be lowered? Perhaps peace could break out with the media. Perhaps your bipartisan relationships across the House and the Senate may now produce some change? Or yeah. are we going to have more of the it, same? It's a very fair question. Look, I would love to see unity and peace and love and any other word you want to use. Uh, and. Obviously, I think we had to, especially at this particular juncture, we had to wait till after the midterms are over. Now they're over. If they would cover me fairly, which they don't, which they don't. I'm not saying that in a hostile way. I get extremely inaccurate coverage. I can do something that's fantastic, and they'll make it look like not good. Uh, and, and I don't mind being — having bad stories. If I make a mistake, cover it. I would like you to cover it fairly, but cover it. But when you do something terrific, look how little the economy is talked about. A poll came out this morning talking about how little the three networks — I don't think they included CNN — but how little the three networks talk about how good the economy is. How little? Almost not at all. If President Obama had this economy — and by the way, if that administration, through somebody else, kept going, you would have had negative 4.2 instead of positive 4.2 percent growth. You would have had negative. It was heading down. But here, the point is this, excuse me. I would love to see uh, unity, including with the media. Because I think the media, I'll be honest, I think it's a very divisive thing for our country. And you would be amazed at how smart people are that are reading your stories and seeing your stories and watching. You'd be amazed how perceptive and how smart they are. They get it. And it really does bring disunity. I, I didn't — excuse me. You — you are not — you are not called on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. How about Turkey? Uh, thank you, uh, President Trump. Uh, shortly after your victory speech on the historic night of uh, — back in November 2016, 
I asked you to what single factor you most attributed this victory to. And Sid, you have to speak up. Sure. Um, on the night of your victory, I asked you right after your speech to what you would attribute your victory. You pointed up to the ceiling and you said that it was God. Um, based off of that, how would you say uh, over the last two, uh, two years, God uh, plays, what kind of a factor he plays in the day-to-day -day execution of the office of the well, president? Well, God plays a big factor in my life, and God plays a factor in the lives of many people that I know very well in this room, like and your vice president. Uh, God plays a very big role in my life. And, okay. and, and, one, and one, more, one, one more back to life, a quick one, a quick follow-up. Um, which loss last night surprised you the most, and which of these unsuccessful candidates are you most likely to consider for Nothing a future administration? Nothing surprises me in politics. Would you but there were some losses last night, and there were some victories last night that have been incredible. I mean, there were victories last night that nobody would believe, especially based on the suppression polls. They had a lot of suppression polls. Would you, would you and consider And there were some any victories last night that were very surprising, but I'm not going to pick out special, you know, well, special Would you consider people. any for it's a post? It's tough enough for those people to have Would you a consider loss. any for an administration post moving forward as one of the very few of the 3.7% unemployed? What? Would you consider any of the people who lost last night for a post in the administration in the near future? I know a couple of very good ones. Yeah, I would, actually. Go ahead, please. Mr. President, Mr. President, I asked you on Monday if there was anything that you regret in your first two years. And you said that at times you could have and should have used a, quote, softer tone. Your critics, as you can imagine, your skeptics, they say they're not holding their breath on that happening. Will you indeed have to change your tone if you're to get things passed through Congress after losing the House? And you also said you might extend an olive branch. What I would, would that look have, like? I would love to have. I'd be very good at a low tone. But when things are done not correctly about you, Mm -hmm. written about you, said about you, on television, on wherever it is. You have to defend yourself. I would love to do very, very even talk, much easier than what I have to do. I have to go around. And going around is much easier than facing somebody and being treated fairly. But when you're not treated fairly, you really have no choice. I would love to have a very even, uh, modest, boring tone. I would be very honored by that. But you know what? When you have to fight, all the time fight because you're being misrepresented by the media, you really can't do that. But not about the media, sir. But, but sir, real quickly, not about the media, but Please. what about with Congress? Please, go ahead. Mr. President, can you tell us how you focus on the economic... Where are you from, please? Japan. Okay. Say Abe. hello. Say hello to Shinzo. <laughs> yes. I'm sure he's happy about tariffs on his cars. Go ahead. That's my question, actually. So how you focus on the trade and economic issue with Japan? Would you ask Japan to do more, or would you change your tone? I don't, I really don't understand you. How would you focus on trade and economic Trade issues? with Japan? Yes. Well, we're dealing with uh, Japan right now on trade. Mm -hmm. uh, Japan has, uh, it's a great country. You have a great prime minister who just had a very successful election. Yes. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. He's one of the people I'm closest with. And, but I tell him all the time that Japan does not treat the United States fairly on trade. They send in millions of cars at a very low tax. They don't take our cars. And if they do, they have a massive tax on the cars. Uh, Japan, and I'm not blaming Japan. I'm blaming the people that were in charge of the United States for allowing that to happen. But as you know, we have close to a $100 billion trade deficit with Japan. And Japan has treated us very unfairly. But uh, don't feel lonely, because you weren't the only one. How about North Korea? How about North Korea? Thank you, Mr. President. Two international news questions. The first one, um, uh, Secretary Pompeo's talks uh, about North Korea, with, uh, North Korea have been postponed. Um, what is happening there, and yeah, will nothing, your no, meeting still it, no, uh, no, happen no, no. with We're uh, going to change it because of trips that are being made. Uh, we're going to make it at another date. But we're very happy how it's going with North Korea. We think it's going fine. We're in no rush. We're in no hurry. The sanctions are on. You still expect to meet no, no, Kim listen, Jong Un? Excuse me. Wait. Sorry, sir. The sanctions are on. Mm -hmm. The missiles have stopped. The rockets have stopped. The hostages are home. The great heroes have been coming home. Mike Pence was in Hawaii, where the one of the most beautiful ceremonies that anyone's ever seen for the fallen. These are great. Heroes, very important when I was running. A lot of people, as many years ago as it was, in many cases, grandchildren, but they were asking about that. Uh, they're coming home and they're being 
provided to us as we speak. Uh, but I'm in no rush. Mm -hmm. I'm in no rush. You're the still... sanctions are on. Mm -hmm. I read uh, a couple of times, and I've seen a few times where they said, he's done so much. What have I done? I met. Now, I'd love to take the sanctions off, but they have to be responsive, too. It's just two-way street. But we're not in any rush at all. There's no rush whatsoever. You know, before I got here, they were dealing with this for over 70 years. And I guess on a nuclear front for 25 years. That's a long time. I've been there. I probably left Singapore four or five months ago. And we made more progress in that four or five months than they've made in 70 years. And nobody else could have done what I've done. But I'll say this. I'll say this very simply. Uh, we're in no rush. The sanctions are on. And whenever it is. But that meeting is going to be rescheduled. That meeting? You, but I bet your, your meeting with Kim Jong-un, sir, will it happen in the next month? You? Uh, sometime next year, I would say. Sometime next sometime, year? Sometime early next year. Yeah. And a quick question on the USMCA. Now that it's been concluded, have you repaired your relationship with Prime Minister Trudeau? Yes, I have. We have a very good relationship. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We've been talking a lot about division and the division that exists in sure. this country right now. Sure. And some of the statistics are disturbing, I think, to just about everyone. Uh, Anti-Semitic incidents have increased by 57 percent since 2016. Hate crimes are on the rise. Why do you think that is? And what will you do about it? It's as very president? sad to see it. I hate to see it. And as you know, I've done more. In fact, if you were with us the last time we met, Prime Minister Netanyahu, said that this president has done more for Israel than any other president. Those words, those exact words. Uh, Jerusalem, protection, working together, so many different things. But the big thing is Jerusalem. You know, many, many presidents have, uh, have said they are going to build the embassy in Jerusalem. Never happened. Making it the capital of Israel. Never happened. Never happened. But it happened with me, and quickly. And not only did it happen, we built the embassy. That would have taken another 15 or 20 years and cost probably billions of dollars. And we did it for a tiny amount of money. It's already done. It's open. Uh, nobody has done more for Israel than Donald Trump. And the nice part is that's not me saying it. That's Prime Minister Netanyahu. But what about the, Mr. President, what about the divides in this country? Mr. President, what about healing the divides in this country well, and we addressing want to see those the, issues We want to see it healed. And one of the things I think that can help heal is the success of our country. We are really successful now. We've gone up $11.7 trillion in, in worth. Uh, if you know, China's come down tremendously, tremendously. China would have uh, superseded us in two years as an economic power. Now they're not even close. China got rid of their China 25 because I found it very insulting. I said that to them. I said China 25 is very insulting because China 25 means in 2025, they're going to take over economically the world. I said, that's not happening. And we've gone way up. They've gone down. And I don't want them to go down. We'll have a good meeting, and we're going to see what we can do. But I have to say this. Uh, billions of dollars will soon be pouring into our Treasury from taxes that China is paying for us. And if you speak to Mr. Pillsbury, who probably is the leading authority on China, he was on the other day saying he has never seen anything like it. And you know who else hasn't? China hasn't. And Mr. President, But we're going to try and make a deal with China because I want to have great relationships with President Xi, as I do, and also with China. You're talking about the okay. economic. How do you see your role Go as ahead. a moral leader? Go ahead, Mr. Please. President, just Go how ahead. do you please, see your role please. as a moral Go leader? Ahead. There's so many people. I'm sorry. As a moral leader, though. I, I think I am a great moral leader, and I love our country. Go ahead, please. Thank you, sir. Um, you said earlier in this press conference that Democrats had a choice that you would not work with them on legislation if they were investigating you. Do you not have a choice in the matter as well? Don't no, you have I a responsibility? I think it's inappropriate. No, no. I think it's very inappropriate. We should get along and get deals done. Now, we can investigate. They look at us. We look at them. It goes on for two years. Then at the end of two years, nothing's done. Now, what's bad for them is, being in the majority, I'm just going to blame them. You understand. I'm going to blame them. They're the majority. Honestly, it makes it much simpler for me. 
I, they will be blamed. But I think Nancy Pelosi, and you know, I put that uh, statement out on social media today about Nancy Pelosi, that if she's short of votes, because frankly, I think she deserves, and a lot of people thought I was being sarcastic or I was kidding, I wasn't. I think she deserves it. She's been fighting long for it. She's been fighting. I really mean this. this there was nothing sarcastic about it or it was really meant in, it, with very good intentions. I think she deserves it. She's fought long and hard. She's a very capable person. And, you know, you have other people shooting at her, trying to take over the speakership. And I said, if, I, if it's appropriate, I said, if we can and if we will, if she has a problem, I think I would be able to very easily supply her the necessary votes. That's not said in any way other than I really believe she deserves that position. I also believe that Nancy Pelosi and I can work together and get a lot of things done, along with Mitch and everybody else that we have to work with. I think we'll get a lot done. Mr. President, why okay, can't you, ahead, Mr. President, why can't you do that while subpoenas are coming through? Excuse me? Why can't you work together while there are subpoenas or while there are investigations in process? I think we will. I, look, now that the election's over, the election's over. Now everybody is in love. But then I see the hostility of questions in the room. I come in here as a nice person wanting to answer questions, and I have people jumping out of their, their seats screaming questions at me. Uh, no, the election's over, and I'm, you know, very — I am extraordinarily happy. I really am. And by the way, I tell you if I wasn't, look at what happened in Florida. Look at what happened in Georgia. Look at what happened in so many locations with governorships. Nobody talks about the governorships. Look at the amount of work that was given to these other candidates against my candidate. And, I mean, I'm extraordinarily happy. And if I wasn't, I'd let you know. There's nothing wrong. I mean, look, you look at midterms and you look at elections, elections generally, you see it's very rare that a party who, who has the presidency does well. We did unbelievably well to win Florida both the Senate and the governorship against two very talented people. I'll tell you what, we did incredibly. To win Georgia when you had some of the biggest stars in the world campaigning endlessly, including President Obama. Uh, you know, I'm, I tell you what, this was a great victory for us. And again, from a deal-making standpoint, we are all much better off the way it turned out. Because I really believe if the, if the Democrats want to, we can do a tremendous amount of great legislation. Yes, please, go ahead. Should we keep this going for a little while? Yes. Yes, yes I think you should keep this going. You know what? When you get bored, would you please tell me? Seriously, tell me. You're never bored. I don't want to, hopefully not. I don't want to overstay, but yes, please, go ahead. Hi, Mr. President. Yemi Shell Center with PBS NewsHour. Um, on the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also saying that the president. I don't know why you'd that say that. That's such a racist question. There are some people that say that no. now the Republican Party is seen as supporting white nationalists oh, because of your rhetoric. That. I don't what believe What do you make that. of that? I don't believe it. I just, well, I don't know. Why do I have my highest poll numbers ever with African Americans? Why do I have among the highest poll numbers with African Americans? I mean, why do I have my highest poll numbers? That's such a racist question. Honestly? I mean, I know you have it written down and you're going to tell me. Let me tell you, that's a racist question. And Mr. Uh, President, I'm I love ask you know what the word is? I love our country. I do. You call, you have nationalists, you have globalists. I also love the world. And I don't mind helping the world, but we have to straighten out our country first. We have a lot of problems. And Ms. Excuse me. But to say that, what you said, is so insulting to me. It's a very terrible thing that you said. And Mr. Okay, President, please, Mr. President, go people have, you, you talked ahead. about, you talked about, middle, you talked about middle class tax cuts on the campaign trail. How will you get Democrats to support that policy? You or have to ask them. Is? Well, hey, what's, what's your plan no, no, for working me. with Democrats you know how, on a middle class is? tax plan? You know what my plan is? I'll ask them. And if they say yes, I'm all for it. And if they say no, there's nothing you can do because you need their votes. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Francesca Chambers, DailyMail.com. Uh, you said many times on the campaign trail that uh, you didn't want Nancy Pelosi to be speaker. At least you suggested that. You spent a lot of time talking about her and Chuck Schumer. question of want. I would have. Uh, so here's, uh, let, me, let me answer a little. Would I have preferred winning by two or three or four? I would almost have to think about that. But certainly, I like to win. Uh, and if I win, she's not going to be speaker. What did she say to you, though, yesterday that made you give her her support? Her Honestly, support? we had a very warm conversation. You know, she loves this country. And she's a very smart woman. 
she's done a very good job. She was really, I mean, she's had a very... Did she promise that very, they wouldn't seek to impeach she's you? She's had a very, very... We didn't talk about impeaching. We didn't talk about... What do you do? Do you impeach somebody because he created the greatest economic uh, success in the history of our country? Let's impeach him because the country is so successful. Let's impeach him. Has he done anything wrong? They asked somebody, has he done anything wrong? No, but let's impeach him anyway. And they also said, let's impeach Justice Kavanaugh. Let's impeach him. And now they have the second woman coming out, that the first, the second. And I hate to say this, but it was public. And after him, we're going to impeach the vice president. We're going to impeach Mike Pence. Mike Pence doesn't get impeached for anything. So okay. let's, let's impeach the president, and then we'll impeach the vice president. These people are sick. And you know what? They have to get their bearing. Really, they have to get their bearing. And when you ask about division, they're the ones that cause the division. They cause tremendous division. Okay, regarding yeah, ahead, all of the retirements in the House, regarding all of the retirements in the House, Mr. President, very quickly, you, you, you suggested Who that... Who is retiring? You said that many of the retirements that happened in the House made it very difficult Many retirements, for, yeah. That made it very difficult for you in this election cycle, and that it was because they were chairmen, they were chairmanships that were vacated. But Jeff Flake wasn't a chairman of a committee, and Paul Ryan also retired the cycle. So why do you think that is? Whose fault is it that there in were so Jeff many In Jeff Flake's case, it's me. Pure and simple. I retired him. I'm very proud of it. I did the country a great service. Go ahead. Give him that. Give him that. He is retired. I'd like to call it another word, but we're going to treat him with great respect. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Jeff Flake. That's another beauty. Go ahead. <laughs> Two questions, please. No, one, 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 one. Well, Too many people. All right. Sorry. All right. You seem to enjoy this venue very much. Are you going to make the standard press conference a staple of the remaining no. two years, or no. will you have more briefings with no. Sarah Sanders? You know, when I don't do the, I think Sarah's fantastic. Where is Sarah? Where is Sarah? Sarah's so great. I think Sarah, you've represented me so well and been abused. She's been horribly treated by a lot of so people. So she's going to stay no, no, on no, no, as no. press secretary. But it's very interesting because Sarah was telling, we were talking about it the other day. So I had a period where I figured, you know what I'll do? I won't do any real interviews. And then they start saying, why isn't he doing what? You know, they're all coming up with all crap. Then over the last couple of months, I decided, I'll do a lot. We'll stop at the helicopter. We'll do this. We'll do a lot of... And then they say, why is he doing so many press conferences? What's wrong? What? So when I don't do them, you say, what's wrong? When I do do them, you say, what's wrong? And when I go in the middle, you say, what's wrong? But in the middle, you know that, John. Right? Yeah, sort of right. Okay, good. No, no, you did. Excuse me. Well, you complained about access when I purposely just stayed away from the press for a while because I wanted to see how it worked. And, and can I be honest with you? It didn't work well. Mr. President, I didn't, it didn't work the well. question. So Sarah will stay on as press secretary. Okay, please, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, first off, I personally think it's very good to have you here because a free press and this I type do of too. engagement. Actually, I do too. Yes, it's vital to it's democracy. It's called earned media. It's worth billions. Go ahead. Um, so I have two questions for you, if that's all right. It's a rare opportunity. Um, first, just a point of clarification on the tax returns issue. Um, you brought up the audit. That doesn't prevent you from releasing them. I know. Oh, sure. But right. That, but it, I didn't say it prevented me. I said lawyers will tell you not to do it. But go if ahead. What's your next question? Go if, ahead. Come well, on. Let's go. I just on that, More exciting okay. question than that, please. Second one. Um, Michael Cohen recently said you called black voters stupid. That's false. Omarosa has accused you of using the N-word, and the, rap the rapper Little John has said you called him Uncle Tom. What's your response? I, I don't know who Little John is. I don't, I really he was don't. on The Apprentice. I don't know. Oh, he was? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Have you ever made racist know. remarks? No, no, I would never do that, and I don't use racist and, remarks. And you know what? If I did... You people have, you would have known about it. I've been hearing there are tapes for years and years. There are tapes. Number one, I never worried about it because I never did. I never used racist remarks. I've never used racist remarks. Okay. Well, one point of fact. Go ahead. You have, no, no, one, one point of Go fact ahead. because you told her you have quiet, the highest approval quiet, among African-Americans. It's just 8 percent, sir, single digits. See, when you talk about division, it's people like this that cause division. Great division. Great no, no, point of fact is that I never used a racist remark. That's the point of fact. Where, who are you from? Um, I'm from Yahoo News. We know Yahoo, 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 no, good, good. I hope, they're, I hope they're doing well. MTV Lebanon, Ellen Dorgan. So first question, 
question. Where are you from? MTV Lebanon. Lebanon. Oh, Lebanon. Good. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. We're so happy to be here as well, have this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Uh, President Erdogan said he's not going to follow your sanctions and he's going to keep uh, buying uh, oil from... Uh, Who he, said that? Uh, President Erdo Erdogan. Turkey. I know, I know. And you're going to meet him uh, soon. Just can't understand his... Okay. Speech. You're going to meet him soon. Uh, you're going to have this talk. And some countries are going to take the same steps that President Erdogan is doing. So and let me just tell you about the oil, okay? So we're po we imposed, just recently, the strongest sanctions in the history of our country, just about. Well, I guess North Korea is there, too. But I gave some countries a break on the oil. I did it a little bit because they really asked for some help. But I really did it because I don't want to drive oil prices up to $100 a barrel or $150 a barrel because I'm driving them down. If you look at oil prices, they've come down very substantially over the last couple of months. That's because of me because you have a monopoly called OPEC. And I don't like, wait, and I don't like that monopoly. I don't like it. And oil prices are coming down. So rather than deciding to be as tough as I am on most of the sanctions, what I've done is I said, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to let some of the oil go out to these countries that really do need it, because I don't want to drive the oil prices up to $100 or $150, which could happen very easily. It's a very fragile market, very, very fragile. I know it very well. And it's the absolute right decision. And they'll get tougher as time goes by, maybe. But I don't want to have any effect on the oil prices worldwide where I drive them up, because I consider that to be a tax, and I don't like taxes. We'll have a peace process between Israel and Palestine. Please, please. The peace process is over. Who? Oh, congratulations to John Tester. Congratulations. I'm sure you're very unhappy about that. Go ahead. Uh, yes, President, please, go ahead. Can you address the... Oh, we'll take a couple of more and then we'll go. Can you address concerns in places like Georgia where people waited in line to vote for hours, where voting machines weren't working in certain uh, districts and You think there wasn't that's the power? reason that the candidate lost? Well, there are concerns being yeah, raised I mean, that, that it wasn't... I wasn't well, involved in to, Georgia. I, was, I know, but... Other, right, than, but other than I love the state. I yes, do but as president state. of the United States, are you concerned about the access that people are having to voting? I heard it was very efficient in Georgia. I heard it was very efficient. But again, you'd have to ask the state governments because uh, just one of those things you're going to have to ask them. Yeah, go ahead, please. Please, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. You expressed some concerns about social media companies unfairly censoring conservatives during the election. Do you anticipate working with Democrats to regulate these companies, or are you satisfied with the I would, with I the would way do that, are? yeah. I would look at that very seriously. I think it's a serious problem. At the same time, you start getting into speech. That's a very dangerous problem. That could be the beginning. So it's very dangerous. Believe it or not, I'm one that really likes free speech. A lot of people don't understand that. But I am a big believer, when you start regulating, a lot of bad things can happen. Uh, but uh, I would certainly talk to the Democrats if they want to do that. And I think they do want to do that. And yes, sir, former, go ahead. Former President, uh, former President Barack Obama famously said that he had a pen and a phone to use executive power on issues like immigration. Do you see yourself using um, executive power to get some of your immigration agenda done? Uh, I do. I do. I think that some of it I can use uh, executive power on some. Not all. But I, I mean, he certainly used it. He used it on DACA. And when he did it, he said something to the effect that, I'm not allowed to do this. It'll never hold up, but I'm doing it anyway. And he did it, and they found judges that approved it. We also found judges that didn't approve it, so it's obviously going to be determined in the Supreme Court. And if the, if the court rules in favor of what President Obama thinks they should rule, which is what he said, then I will probably have a deal with the Democrats in a very short period of time. We were very close to having a deal until we got that very strange ruling. You also made some promises about immigration during the campaign, and I want to know if you're going to follow through with them. Are you going to aggress Which one are you talking about? Uh, birthright citizenship. Are you going to sign an executive order uh, to ban? We're looking at it very seriously, absolutely. Is, is yes or no? Are and you I, go I believe we have the absolute right, but that's another case that will be determined by the Supreme Court of the United States. Are you going to send 15,000 troops to the border? Uh, you've been reading the same documents as I have. You know exactly what I'm doing. You know exactly what I'm doing. 
So go ahead, what's your next question? Um, also, on the, the Khashoggi matter, we've been more than a month since the death of Mr. Khashoggi, yeah. the journalist. Very um, sad thing, very terrible thing. Do you think Saudi Arabia is guilty of, of having him murdered? And if so, I'll what kind of punishment will be involved? I'll have a much stronger opinion on that subject over the next week, and I'm working very closely with Congress. We're working together, some very talented people, and we're working with Congress, we're working with Turkey, and we're working with Saudi Arabia, and I'm forming a very strong opinion. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. Mr. President, just a, just a quick follow-up. You, you said something about Nancy Pelosi. You said that Nancy Pelosi, she loves our country. Do you regret some of the things you said during the campaign? I mean, no. various times you said no. Democrats want to put a wrecking ball to our future, well, want to I destroy that. our country. I, I believe that. With their current policy, they're using a wrecking ball on our country. I believe that 100 percent. This would be a wrecking ball. But I think there's a compromise somewhere, and I think that could be really good for our country. Okay, how about one more? Do you, Go regret, ahead. The ad, do you, do you regret the ad that, that you did that was branded as a racist ad, and even Fox no, News wouldn't air it, no. NBC wouldn't air it? Do I regret it? Networks? Yeah. I'm surprised you'd ask me that question. I do not. Go ahead, please. No. Thank you, sir. And I think uh, we'd all love to have more of these, if you're willing. Uh, in 2017, shortly after you took office, your Homeland Security Department shuttered a program to counter uh, homegrown uh, right-wing extremism, white supremacism, and related uh, terrorist groups, domestic terrorist groups, and redirected that funding towards fighting Islamic terrorism. Do you believe that uh, white supremacist terrorists, right-wing terrorists, these homegrown terrorists on that side of the spectrum are a problem? Sir, and yeah, what is I your do. administration going to do about I do believe that's it? a problem. I believe all hate is a problem, but I do believe that is a problem. What are you going and to it's do a problem it, we want to solve. How, okay. Sir? What are you Go going ahead. to do about it, sir? Sir, 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 what are you going to do about it? Go ahead. You cut off the funding. Mr. President, you've no, said... No, we have given funding for that, a lot of funding, but I do believe it's a problem. And, and can I tell you what? It's a problem that I don't like even a little bit. Go ahead. Aixa Diaz with Hearst Television. You've said, pretend I'm on the ballot yesterday. You called it a referendum on your presidency. Many local districts across the country rejected your midterm message, particularly suburban women. How do you bridge that divide now? Also, with the influx I, I of women coming into Congress. I think my message was very well received. I mean, just look at the results. Midterm elections are disasters for sitting presidents and administrations. This has been a very successful and, and look, you can write it any way you want. And if you disagree with me, this has been an incredibly successful one. You look at the races. How about Ohio? I didn't even mention. I mentioned Florida. I mentioned Georgia. How about the governor of Ohio? So what's your a fantastic to suburban excuse me, women excuse voters. Me, excuse me. A fantastic man who was down in the polls, and everybody was talking about this person that was so great. And I went up there and I did a rally. And they have now a great governor. You're going to have a great governor in Ohio for hopefully a long period of time, but for four years. And Mike DeWine is a fantastic person. And I went up there for two reasons, because I felt that his opposition was not a good person, and we know a lot about him. And I felt that Mike was a fantastic person. And he won. And not only did he win, he won easily. So add that to Florida and add that to Georgia, and add that to all of the other races that we won, outside even of the Senate races, which were the biggest of all. Because these were races that, and Mike Pence can tell you, and some of the folks over here can tell you, these were races that were going to be unopposed. We were, going to, we were not going to oppose certain of the people running, certain senators. They said they couldn't be beaten. They said Heidi could not be beaten. Please don't do it. They couldn't. This was a year out. What about in the suburban Excuse districts? Me. You, How no, do you but get you're those telling back? Me about, you're telling me about popularity. They said many of these people, when I said nine out of 11, but I said when many of these people, these weren't like easy races. These were tough races. And so I think the level of popularity, the first question I was asked was about, well, what have you learned? What about your own popularity? I think that's what I learned. Is my po I, I was very well received by this great country, by the people of our great country. And I'm very proud of that, because I love the people of this country. These people, we are the greatest people. I love the people of so our country. And, women, and I'll President. tell you something. When you look at the races that we won in Florida, which we weren't expected to win, and Georgia, which we weren't expected to win, and Ohio, which we weren't expected to win, and won, 
I mean, you look at some of them, the number of votes that we got is incredible. So I'm really happy with not only the way it came out, but the response to me as your president. And as your president, I've made our country safe. I've rebuilt and am in the process of rebuilding our military, and the jobs are here, every one of them built here. Uh, we're going to have the strongest, very shortly, we're going to have the strongest military our country has ever had. Uh, I've done more for the vets than any president has done, certainly in many, many decades, with choice and with other things, as you know, with other things. Uh, but the, our vets are doing better than they've ever done. But if you look at choice, choice alone, I mean, just take a look at what we've done with choice. But the people of our country are very happy with the job that I'm doing. And you know, one of, the things, one, of the things, one of the things that they want so much is security. They want security, both at the border, they want it with our military, they want it with law enforcement, they want it with ICE. You know, we've taken out thousands of MS-13 gang members, thousands out of, it's hard to believe, thousands out of our country. Women of our country who are incredible people, they want security, they want safety, they want financial security also. We've done that. But they want physical security. And we've taken out thousands of people that shouldn't be in this country. But we have to get strong immigration laws so they don't come in. We want laws where they don't come in, where we don't have to take them out per se. And again, I'm very honored to be with all of you. Uh, it was a great day yesterday. It was a great evening. I think we had a tremendous success, and hopefully the tone can get better. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the tone can get a lot better. And I really believe it begins with the media. I really, I, we used to call it the press. Does it begin but with I really, you, Mr. President? I really believe it begins with the media. If you would cover, and there was a very interesting story written in a very good paper recently that talked about the fact that it isn't good what the media is doing, and that I do have the right to fight back because I'm treated very unfairly. So I do fight back. And I'm fighting back not for me. I'm fighting back for the people of this country. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.